Good morning and welcome to Rising. Thanks for moseying on by. We've got an excellent show for you today. Some very interesting, fascinating news, I think, to discuss. I actually have a radar today, so I can't wait to get to that. Mm -hmm. But first, we should talk, I guess, about Joe Biden's uh, farewell sort of address last night, although he'll remain the president for several more weeks and months. President Biden did address the nation last night, saying that he's ready to hang up his cleats and pass the torch to the next generation. Let's watch. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future, all merited a second term. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. You know, there is a time and a place for long years of experience in public life. But there's also a time and a place for new voices, fresh voices, yes, younger voices. Now, in his first speech since dropping out on Sunday, Biden also assured Americans that he would finish his term. For the next six months, I'll be focused on doing my job as president. That means I'll continue to lower costs for hardworking families, grow our economy, I'll keep defending our personal freedoms and our civil rights, from the right to vote to the right to choose. Many Democrats applauded the speech online. Former President Barack Obama tweeted, quote, the sacred cause of this country is larger than any one of us. Joe Biden has stayed true to these words again and again over a lifetime of service to the American people. Thank you, POTUS. And CNN's Van Jones got emotional while reacting to the speech. Let's watch. He asked the question, does character still matter? Well, it does tonight. <clears throat> it does tonight. Uh, the kid with a stutter did good. He did good. That's a good man. He fell on his sword. He fell on his sword. Most heroes, they, they fight to the bitter end. He fell on his sword. Uh, he's, a, he's an old guy. But he, the heart's still there. You know, the, the, the words aren't as clear. But the love is, is as clear. This, this, the, the heart is still there. And I think people need to look at this because you had somebody in, sitting in that chair and he wouldn't give up power no matter what. Wouldn't give up power, let there be an insurrection, wouldn't, wouldn't get out of that chair. Even when the people voted for you to get out of the chair, he wouldn't get out of the chair. And you've got somebody who's sitting in that same chair showing that character does matter, showing that you can have grace, you can put the people first, uh, you, you can pass the baton, and you're a bigger person for it. But not all were so kind. Pierce Morgan tweeted, quote, Joe Biden didn't pass the torch to Kamala Harris, as he so disingenuously claimed in his sad, uninspiring address last night. He had his presidency and career torched by Democrat arsonists Obama, Pelosi, Schumer, Clooney, etc. Yeah, point to Piers Morgan for this one. Joe Biden did not go quietly into that good night uh, very quickly. Um, look, he could have passed the torch after he won, uh, after uh, the midterms, and said, you know what, I'm not going to run for a second term, and because I said I was going to be a, a, a change president, I was going to um, be a bridge to the next generation of leadership. That's what he ran on when he... Mm -hmm decided to run for president in 2020, but he didn't do that. He decided to stick it up and, and pursue a second term, even as grave concerns about his mental and physical fitness increased over time and then became dramatically apparent to all. And even then, he didn't step aside willingly or quickly. He just had the entire leadership of the party, Pelosi, Schumer, um, Barack Obama, George Clooney, the donor base, the donor class, the elite donor class, turn on him and make it impossible for him to continue his presidency. And now here we are. So uh, I, I feel like this attempt to paint him as this great patriot for willingly ceding power is a little bit of uh, abrupt historical revisionism, but that's what they're going to do. I kind of feel similarly. It's almost like they're trying to evoke feelings of like saying goodbye to a sick elderly family member. Yeah. We should not feel that way about the president of the United States. Who's still the president. 
he's still the president. Right, exactly. Right, they're, you're, you're, True. you're correctly describing, like, they're putting him on the glacier or the ice floe and sending him off, off to sea. He's still supposed to be running the country at a perilous time for our nation when we're embroiled in conflicts all over the globe. Netanyahu visiting yesterday. We're going to be talking about that uh, more on the show, the situation in Israel. Um, this is time where we need competent leadership at the mm. wheel. And... Uh, so, so contrast that with, yeah, everybody do it like it's a retirement party. The job remains to be done. Can he do it? He, he sat there and bragged that he's one of the only presidents in recent history, maybe the only, who's been able to say we are not at war. And that's a weird thing to say mm. when the Pentagon authorized airstrikes on Yemen yesterday, when you've been financing Israel's genocide in Gaza, when you haven't used your power as president to rein in the far-right leader of Israel, who is now speaking before Congress, getting standing ovations. It's kind of like sick that his legacy is what a good guy because he stepped aside. Yeah, because he stayed in office to get so old that he had to. And I think someone like Van Jones eulogizing him in this way that's very emotional might have been a part of the the negotiating between Nancy Pelosi and Biden. He might have been like, fine, I'll step aside. But everybody has to say nice things about me. But I want Van Jones eulogizing me. Yeah. I want them on the verge of crying. They're all going to need to say that I'm the greatest. Like, this could have very well you're, been part of that. You're conflict. absolutely right. Uh, that... I believe to explicitly have been part of the deal because everyone is doing, they're falling over themselves to praise him, not just Democrat media commentators and Democrats, and they're saying, oh, it's so brave of him. So, what, you know, we've not seen this since Roman times. What was it, Cincinnatus or was the emperor who went back to tend his, uh, his, his garden once the crisis has, had passed, that it's that kind of heroism on, on a display. You, you he know, fell how, on the sword, Robbie. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, you know how men have to think about the Roman Empire several times yeah. each week is, uh, as it goes. Um, so they're all <laughs> praising him, but there's still a job to be done. And you're right about the, the war point. Okay, we're, we're arming Ukraine, mm -hmm. and they're at war. Um, we're funding Israel, and they're at war. Biden's record on war, yes, he got us out of Afghanistan in a very messy way, although it was important to get out of Afghanistan. Trump, to the same extent, really hasn't started any massive new confrontations, although you're right to point out, you know, drone strikes continue against the nebulous war on terror everywhere. A lot of continuity, actually, on foreign policy, more than, I think, the American people, the America first foreign pe uh, people on both sides of the political spectrum would like to see. But um, let's not, yeah, let's not pretend this is... This is peacetime. It certainly doesn't feel like peacetime. And our spending priorities are not as if it's peacetime. We're spending tons on our military and on foreign militaries. Absolutely. It's good that everyone who is wondering gets to see the president is alive um, and is in the Oval Office again. I yeah. think that waiting this long to address it publicly was an interesting move because I think everyone that imagined him dropping out before Sunday imagined a video address yeah. to be the delivery method, not a PDF and a tweet. Yeah, well, he just didn't want to do it. He absolutely did not want to do this, and he doesn't want to dwell on it, he doesn't want to talk about it, and now he's going to be checked out. Um, I mean, I think that speech, you know, rhetorically, he was just you know, reading from a teleprompter. I, I don't think he read it with a ton of energy. Um, I don't think anyone was watching it and saying, man, did we screw up? He really, maybe he... Look, he has that fire. He still could have pulled it together. He, he just he seems incapable of campaigning, and so mm -hmm. maybe it's for the best, although I do have a lot of questions and skepticism about Kamala Harris's electability that we're going to get to a little bit later on the show. Coming up, my radar. Stick around. More rising right after this. <laughs> 